What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. Have you ever wondered what happens during a game's loading screen and why some of them take so much time? To answer these questions, suppose you are a game developer working on one of these loading screens for a triple A game. Let's think together. What is the first thing that should happen for the game to start up? Well, similarly to any other application, our data, our code, and the images and videos used have to be loaded from the local storage into the random access memory. Then, because these games tend to be huge applications, they have to create way more objects than your average app. Hence, the creation of these objects will take more time compared to some normal application. Now, on top of these initialization steps, some games or huge apps may need to download external data, such as sounds, arts, translations, or many others, and this also adds to the time of loading. Additionally, after doing all these steps, some cleaning may be required to delete temporary downloads or some files that were loaded at the start, just so others could load but now are no longer required. And finally, this screen may need to load previously saved profiles by the user or initiate a new game profile or whatever. Okay, now why am I telling you all this? And what does that have to do with today's topic? You see, the pieces of code I was writing since the beginning can actually be put inside a method. And this method can be used by the developer working on the loading screen. So, if we were developing the loading screen of World of Warcraft, for example... This method will be housed inside a World of Warcraft Loader class. And when we need to load the game, this class will be instantiated and the load method will be called. Now, a few weeks later, the manager asks you to develop the loading screen of Diablo also. But while developing, you notice that both classes share the same exact steps. However, some of their implementations may vary. An example could be that while the code for creating and loading the various needed objects was entirely different in both cases, the code behind the deleting and the cleaning of temporary files was almost identical. Wouldn't it be great to get rid of the code duplication, all while leaving the steps and their order inside the algorithm structure intact? Well, the template method pattern suggests that you break down your algorithm into a series of steps or methods. Then, what you have to do is put a series of calls to these methods or steps inside a single template method, which in our case is the load method. The steps may either be abstract or have some default implementation inside the parent class. Now, to use the algorithm defined by the series of steps, the client must provide its own subclass, implement all abstract steps, and, if need be, override some of the optional ones, but not the template method itself. Let's see how this will play out with our game loading classes. The first thing we need to do is extract each logic into a separate method. In this example, we can have the load local data, the create objects, the download additional files, the clean temp files, and initialize profiles methods. Now, we can choose to declare all these methods or steps as abstract, hence forcing the subclasses created to implement all of them. Or, we can choose to provide some of these methods with a default implementation in the base class. This will allow us to get rid of code duplication inside the subclasses we are going to create. The next step is to create a specific or concrete class for each loader we need and let it extend the base game loader class we just created. In our example, we will have two subclasses, the World of Warcraft Loader and the Diablo Loader classes. These classes will share the same implementation of the clean method, for example, but they will provide their own specific implementation for all remaining steps. By doing this, each step will contain the actual behavior needed by this specific game we are trying to load. You see, that's what the template method is all about. This pattern is a behavioral one that defines the skeleton of an algorithm in the superclass, but lets subclasses override specific steps of the algorithm without changing its structure. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the structure or class diagram of the template method design pattern, while taking into consideration the example and the classes we created in our game loading application. The first thing you may have noticed is the abstract class, which in our case was the base loader class. This class declares methods that act as steps of an algorithm, as well as the actual template method which calls these methods in a specific order. The steps may either be declared abstract or have some default implementation. 
The second part of the diagram are the concrete classes, of course, which were represented by the World of Warcraft loader and the Diablo loader classes. These classes can override all of the steps provided by their parent class, or only the abstract ones, except for the template method itself. Okay, to sum everything up, the template method pattern allows you to turn an algorithm into a series of individual methods that can be easily extended and overridden by subclasses. This is done while keeping intact the structure of your base algorithm defined in the superclass. When you turn such an algorithm into a template method, you will be able to pull up the steps with similar implementations into the superclass housing this template method, hence eliminating code duplication. Additionally, the code that varies between our different implementations can and should remain in the subclasses. So, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, and I will see you in the next one.